War Eagle, my name is Danny Butler. I'm the Assistant Dean of Global Programs here in the Harvard College of Business. What I'd like to do is to walk you through an information session that talks about our summer study abroad programs. These are our major programs that we are going to present during the summer of 2024. I'd like to go over the goals of our programs, a little bit of the history of our programs, and one of the questions that comes up early, and I will repeat, is does a Harvard study abroad experience make a difference? And the answer is yes. Our latest data is that students that study on our major summer study abroad programs have a starting average salary of $10,323 higher than students that don't go on these major programs during the summer. I want to get that out there. I'm going to walk over the health and safety and supervision, and we do not even blink about those issues. That is our number one priority with every program we present in the Harvard College of Business. I'll then present basically the programs that we have, as well as a shell calendar so you can see how they all fit. And one of the other questions that comes up early is, hey, if uh, my student goes abroad, can I come and visit? And the answer is absolutely yes during the break, and I will show you that when I walk over the calendar. Another consideration, me being a parent of two daughters, one of which that has gone on one of the Harvard Study Abroad programs, is what about the cost? How much does it cost, and what kind of value is it? I will walk us through a process, a process on how to be involved and sign up for our summer study abroad programs and highlight a word, word called commitment, what you're going to do in order to be in this, and then a number of action items that will be helpful to you moving forward. So what about the goals of our program? As in all businesses, Harvard is a business school. We're a professional school. We have goals. And what those goals are, number one, provide a safe, healthy learning environment. We would like to provide solid academic content. At the same level that you would get here on Auburn's campus, you're gonna get abroad. We want you to have, and your student to have, professional opportunities for development. And what do we mean by that? I'll go over, but generally, academic classes in the morning, solid courses, and then in the afternoon, the opportunity to skin their knees to get out on the economy and learn what it's like to move in a metro system, bus system, to experience the economy. We also have a goal in the university, and it is called to create a global mindset. This is an Auburn University strategic goal, as well as a goal for the College of Business, the Harvard College of Business. And a global mindset basically is to think differently, think globally, and try to have an idea of what it's like when things occur in other countries and how that will impact our businesses here in Alabama and in the United States. We want you to have excellent value for the time and money invested. You'll notice I do not say it is an expense. It is the money invested. You are investing in your student's future and you as the student are investing in your future with us. We want a transformative learning experience. And when I say transformative, I'm talking very similar to what you found when you left your home, came to Auburn for a semester, and went home over the break, and your parents said, what happened? My high school graduate has come up back as a college attendee and one that has a different mindset, a different level of learning, a different way of looking at the world, simply because it's transformative. And most importantly, um, the, the, the reality is, my mother was a kindergarten teacher, my father was a clown, I can't make that up. What does that make me? It makes me a university professor. And I've been here at Auburn University since 1989, and one of the things that is my mantra is, we need to have fun. And if we're not having fun, why are we doing it? We need to figure out a way for these programs to accomplish all of our goals and at the same time have fun for all concerned. What I'd like to do is I'd also like to go over the history of our programs here in Harvard that have to do with study abroad. 
And I am very fortunate that I was one of the two people that started these back in 1997. Dr. Sharon and Oswald and I started a program in Prague. And one of the things that is important to know is that from the beginning, it's been about the health and safety of our students along with the academic experience. We've been doing this now for 27 years at the undergraduate level. We've not missed a summer except for COVID, and that was out of our control. We were doing so well after a couple of years that when they created the executive MBA programs and some of our MBA programs, that they then added this model of a study abroad component such that in our executive programs it is required. We have presented programs in over 34 countries. Auburn's Harvard College of Business, I'm proud to say, is looked at as a leader. We are a leader here at the university in terms of the manner in which we present our programs and the rest of the colleges and the university are asking us, hey, Butler, hey, Harvard, how are you doing those things? How are you doing these things successfully to hit all the boxes? That's not to say that I don't have a huge ego and a small brain. The rest of the university is doing well, as, uh, doing well, but we are working together and we are benchmarking, and I am fortunate that we are working together to move all of our programs forward. Within this context, I also want to focus on this whole idea of safety this right here. It is non-negotiable. That is where we start first. We have a mantra that we use and it's called Mama Be Safe. We know that your student and you students may not want to hear this, but you are Mama's baby. I have a daughter that's 30 years old and to me she is still Samantha. She's still the small child. I have one that's 32. I, Amanda, they're still my children and I see them even though they're adults is small. So that's the most precious thing that we have are our children. And as the assistant dean, and it's the mantra of all of our program directors, mama be safe. We're going to treat your child like it's our child, even though they're adults. We will maintain a ratio that is 20 to one is what the university requires. That means 20 students for every faculty or staff. I'm also happy to say we exceed this, meaning that we are usually in the neighborhood of 15 to 17 students to folks on the ground. And we do this because it's important that we are available to make sure that your students have access to anything and everything they need for their safety, their health, and their educational opportunities abroad. And of course, I hit on this last little thing about the history. We have a great value in that employers put a number on us at $10,323 higher starting salary on average than the students that don't go on these programs. So that's a little bit of the history. What I'd like to do is I move you to the Mama Be Safe we've talked about just a moment ago. Uh, we have folks on the ground in the facilities 24 seven. Students will have a phone that we provide that has a chip in it so we will know where they are, not only when they're in country, but during the weekends when they have an opportunity to travel abroad, if there's anything that we need to be able to locate them and to communicate with them, we know where they are. It is about mama be safe 24 seven. I've told you about the ratio 15 to 17, and then we have this thing on health and safety. Besides everything else, all students will have a CISI, that's the name of the company that puts it out. It's included in the program fee. Think of this as a very high-end Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance policy. From the time they leave to the time they come back, they are covered for any and all kinds of accidents illnesses, the flu, whatever they need, we are available to help them and they have this card while they're abroad. In terms of the facilities, woo, facilities. That is the biggest challenge that we always have and that is where can we find a location that's safe, that is accessible to the learning facilities, that is accessible to the town or the cities that we're in. We physically go over twice a year 
in the fall to contract for our facilities. Usually it is a repeat contract, but we say we're going to need this many rooms. We want to have this set up this way. We do that in the fall, but we also do something very important in terms of the vetting. We physically walk and get on the buses and the metros to go to the clinics, to go to the hospitals, to walk to the grocery stores, to get on the metros and the metro stops, to help students understand if the metro's on strike, how do you get on a bus? What bus do you take, et cetera? We are going to make sure that these programs are safe and your student has an opportunity to be in an environment that we have hand selected underneath the whole mantra of mama be safe. We check out this process. We do it in the fall and then we go back again in the spring, usually around March to make sure everything that we've asked for is going to be ready for your students as they start arriving in May in the beginning of the summer. Here's an example of our accommodation for 2023. I'm very happy to say that this, this facility is one in Milan and um, I never stayed in a place like this, but it had a swimming pool or it has a swimming pool. It's 24 seven within these hallways. There are monitors, there's video cameras, students check in and check out. There's security at the, at the gate. There are fire extinguishers in every room. And it's one of those places that is really a nice facility, but it's also centrally located. We try to find our our facilities within four to six blocks of a metro or a bus station and we try to make sure that the distance from the room to the classroom is about 30 minutes. That's about what it is here in Auburn unless you're living on campus. But if you are having to commute in like you will as a business person when you live at home or an apartment and you go to work, it's going to be about a 30 to 35 minute commute. We design this this way. We do not want the students next door. We want them on the economy to where they have to grow up. They have to figure out the environment. That's part of the learning process. We want them ready to go when they leave Auburn. If they've negotiated Milan and Madrid, I will assure you they can negotiate New York or Atlanta or Orlando or Chicago. That's part of our goal. But this gives you an idea of what the facility looks like. Here is, um, this is uh, one of our rooms. This was a double in, in uh, Madrid. You can see that they have TVs in there. They've got sitting, living accommodation. Um, again, I've, <laughs> these are nice facilities. Uh, all the facilities, I'm sorry for the uhs and the ums, the facilities all have indoor entrances, meaning you cannot enter these facilities unless you go through the main corridors, the main uh, security areas. This is an example of a kitchen. You'll notice that they, in Europe, everybody's going to have a hot pot in terms of making tea or coffee. Microwave, place to cook, place to clean. Uh, I want to repeat this for the guys. Uh, this is where, this is called a sink. This is where you're supposed to clean your dishes. Not that I know as a guy, but it was not always on my high end of a priority. Um, oh, so that moves us from our goals and our history and our philosophies to now, what are the programs for 2024? Perfect. Glad you asked, Andy Butler. So as promised, now I'd like to introduce our programs for the summer of 2024. You can see that we're going to be going to Milan and we're going to be going to Madrid. So what are, this, what are our programs like? What I want you to think about is what you see right here. This is a Venn diagram and I, it's helpful to parents and students as well as the administrators that might be watching this to have a better understanding of how we create our programs. First and foremost, the Harvard College and the university has its academic standards that we must meet and have courses that are going to be presented that will work in both offshore, being taught offshore, but they're the same level and the same academic rigor that you would get here at Auburn. The second part of this has to do with the parents. Parents have certain things that they want and what they want is they want value for their money, they want their students to be safe. They want courses that are going to count towards graduation. 
And students, hey, I went on one of these myself in 19, in 19, we won't talk about that, 1979, and students have a different perspective. So what we do is we design for right here. We design this, this, uh, these programs with this Venn diagram to where do these all meet together to help everyone meet the goals that they have and at the same time meet the goals of the other constituent. This area right here represents what our final program offerings are. It is important that you know who the program directors and professors are. Dr. Dan Paget and Dr. Gary Adams have been running programs here in the Harvard College of Business for, oh, we're, we're hitting about 15 years. They've, they've administered and run programs at the MBA level, the executive MBA level, and most thankfully they've been organizing and directing our summer study abroad undergraduate programs for over 10 years with great success. On top of that, I think it's important for you to know every one of the teachers that are teaching in the main programs over the summer are award-winning faculty. They are the best of the best of the best. They have been they've bestowed upon them university-wide teaching awards for their concern for students, their understanding and knowledge, but most importantly, they are very empathetic and they care for our students. We handpick these. We have a whole lot of people that want to teach in these programs over the summer, and the answer is nay, nay, it's not gonna happen, simply because you need to be at a certain level and have a certain kind of it, whatever it is, to be involved with our summer programs. And so we have the best of the best of the best in front of your students. I should also say class sizes are something that's going to come up. Oh, I heard the class is going to be a class size of 100. Well, we may have a class size of 100. The good news is that same class here on Auburn's campus is 400. If it's a management class, it'll be 350. If it's a finance class, it'll be 120. If it's an accounting class, it'll be 110. We try to keep our classes in the level of about 50 to 75. Some classes are 25, some classes are 100, but it's important to know this is why we have the best of the best of the teachers in front of your student, and you as the student, you get the best. You don't get what's left like there is here on campus when you register. So, programs. What are the programs? For non-business majors, we have a business minor, a complete business minor. This is a tremendous value in terms of time invested because a business minor requires five classes. It is an official minor on your transcript. Normally, a business minor takes between one and a half to two years because of sequencing. The Honors College came to us along with engineering and said, our students don't have extra semesters, Butler. Could you please design something such that they could get an entire business minor or close to it in one summer? And we have listened and we have designed a program so any business, any non-business major, agriculture, chemistry, mathematics, engineering, business minor to go along with art history, to go along with liberal arts, it will help in the ability of your student to have a long-term opportunity with companies that will hire your student for non-business majors. This is a full summer. It is both Italy and Spain, half the summer in Italy. Week break when you come to visit, if you wish, or your friends will come to visit. And then we will finish up in Spain. We also have a flex program, and the flex program has to do with what happened last summer. We had about 35 students that wanted to go, and they'd already had two of the program, minor program classes. It was lockstep. This summer, we have a flex program. You can take half of your business minor, either the first in Milan or the second in Madrid. So if you've already had a couple of courses, you're all set. You can still do half of the summer in Europe to complete your business minor or start it in Europe and complete it once you come back in one more semester. Who is eligible for a business minor? Non-business majors. You do not have to be an Auburn student. Friends of our Auburn 
Students have come from other universities, Connecticut, New York, uh, Chicago. They enroll as a transient student for $125. As far as Auburn University is concerned, these students are also Auburn University students. They're affiliated with us and they will receive Auburn University credit for the courses. Ideally, you'll have a 2.5 GPA or better. We understand that there are some people that are in courses in engineering to where they're getting hammered in one course and it may be a little less. We look at a trend, although 2.5 is what is preferred. Sidebar, you must be motivated for these programs. You're gonna have to take real classes. If you want a complete business minor in one summer, you must complete all five classes, or you can just complete some of them, as I said, and spend half of the summer abroad. For business majors, oh, business majors, oh, business majors, do we have something for you? Business majors, first and foremost, we've brought back the consulting program. It is to help you better understand the process of being a business consultant. It is a lockstep four course sequence it is going to be uh, uh, mentored by previous partners in Accenture and in McKinsey, and they will walk you through the process over the course of the summer working with clients to work on consulting projects. And many of you are going to say, well, I don't know anything about consulting. Nay, nay, brand new into town. And I say, hey, I'm looking for a restaurant, and you give me uh, a recommendation and you say, hey, Butler, why don't you go to uh, Mama Goldberg's? And I say, well, sandwiches, but I was going to give my fiance a ring. Oh, well, I'm going to have to think about then. You want a different kind of restaurant, high end. This is what consultants do. People present a problem. They give them the information that they have on hand. And with new information, they may have to research, make some decisions and make recommendations. That's all a consultant does. They just get paid handsomely to do it. Our second program is what we call the Fast Track. This is for students that are between their sophomore and junior year. They take five required classes. It's five classes that all business majors must take, and they can take that between their sophomore and junior year. And you can get all five classes, or like the business minor, take a couple for half the summer, have the summer to work, the other half, and vice versa. And our last program that we offer is called Business Flex. The really important part of Business Flex is for all of you out there who have to take, which is every business major, must take MNGT 4800 Business Strategy. But this time, you can take this in Europe. Instead of going 14 weeks on Auburn's campus, you can do this over three full weeks, and I'll show you the program where we do three weeks at a time, and then have the rest of the summer to backpack and kind of travel and do what Europeans may do. They call it a gap year, but it allows you to kind of get mm, some traveling in on leveraging the time that you're abroad, but you can take this class, get it out of the way. With the FLEX program, you're only going to be abroad half the summer. Full 12 weeks or half the summer, all 12, both Milan and Madrid, six weeks in either Milan or Madrid. Eligibility, business consulting, ideally you will be a junior or senior level with a 3.0 or better. We are selective here. You must have prerequisite classes of intro to management, intro to marketing, intro to finance. Those are prerequisites for the business consulting class. Uh, within the business fast track and flex, it's open to business majors only. And again, we're giving a 3.0 or higher priority for your GPA. So now let's look at what this shell schedule is for all of our programs. And it'll make it a little more, uh, it'll make it clearer of what I've been talking about with these programs and how we set things up. So let's take a look here. What you'll see is we have summer one and summer two. And in summer one, students must take a class in session one, and they must take a class in session two. We do not want students abroad with three weeks with nothing to do. So 
Regardless of the program, you'll take a course here and you'll see it goes for three weeks. It will start on the 13th and it will end on the 31st. These are one class at a time, 9 to 1230, Monday through Friday. Students, and it's not three hours of lecture, it's not three hours of what you're having to put up with me. Some of the classes have Monopoly games, some of them have role playing, some of them have activities. So it's not three hours of lecture and just write down and repeat of what many of you experienced many years ago as parents and students right now. Uh, it's not like some of your classes. They're more experiential in nature, a lot more fun, I would say. But you do three weeks and then you're done. And then you start your next class. You'll start your next class here in session two. You do three weeks and then you're done. And at that point, you see the clear area here from the 22nd until the 30th. 22nd of June until the 30th. This is your break. This is where parents come to visit or you go somewhere with your parents or your friends. You meet up, but you are free to go. It is a summer break. You'll need the time away because you'll work very hard every day, 9 to 1230. You take a break. You go have lunch with some of your classmates. You then go and study until 5, 5.36. You're usually done about that time. If you're like most students, you'll go and take a nap. You'll wake up in about an hour. You'll get yourself ready. You'll start to go out. You'll go have dinner someplace in Europe, in Milan, and in Madrid. It's customary for dinner to be between 8 and 10 o'clock at night. That's part of the culture. And then you'll usually get in by around 11 or 12, normally. Then you get your rest, you come home, and you start all over again. This is what the schedule looks like. So going back to the schedule here, you'll notice that we've also got some beige areas. These two beige areas, by the way, are the weekend activities to where you will have culture. We are going to make sure that your sons and daughters get out and about on something that is supervised or scheduled. As an example, we ran a program to Rome, and in September I ran into a parent, and she about took my head off, and she said, Butler, I can't believe my son was in Rome for six weeks, and he never went to the Colosseum. And it's like, whoa, help, whoa. You realize that the study facility, the rooms, the classrooms were literally 150 yards away from the entrance of the Colosseum. You, you know that, right? No. And you know that every afternoon your son was free at 1230. You know that, right? No. And you know that we even provided some tickets for him to go to the Colosseum. You know that, right? No. He said he didn't have a chance. I'm going to fix that. So what we've done is that we have some activities to make sure your students get culture and get some business experiences, and we tie them into some of our on-the-ground classes. So the 25th and the 15th, you'll notice it's beige. Those two days, the students are not available to travel on those weekends because they have required activities. When we move to Madrid, you'll notice that, that will, their classes start on the 1st, and they'll finish on the 16th. They'll start on the 17th, and they'll end on the 2nd. So that's session 3 and four. And again, there are two cultural business weekends. These are three week blocks. Students will be in class the exact amount of time that they will be in class here at Auburn in a regular semester, but they're doing them one class at a time. We have tried doing multiple classes and we've experimented. We've done research on this and what we have found is that students don't do well with multitasking. Most of us don't. The research is clear. One class at a time means they are only focused on that one major class going through. We do have an online class, and that's what this line is right here, that will go over the course of the summer if the students want to have either nine hours for the short or 15 hours for the entire summer. This is what the schedules look like. It's a master block schedule. It works pretty well. Field trips. I told you about the beige areas. This gives you an example. Last summer, we took the students to the Ferrari plant on, uh, in Milan. 
We went up, we had a company visit, we had a briefing by the company, we walked through the factory, uh, and then we had some cultural time going out to some local areas within the region they were in. Another weekend, we went up to the Lake Como region. Um, we did a boat ride across to one of the islands. We saw some of the old villas that were there. We learned a lot about the history of Italy and the different, I use the word clans, but the, the different um, regions and regencies that were running Italy going back a couple of hundred years. And it's quite the opportunity for students to see something they haven't seen before. In and around uh, Madrid, we'll go to Segovia, we'll go to uh, Toledo. There's a picture here of Toledo. Uh, it's a uh, mountainous town. It's one of the real interesting areas in the world where Christians and Muslims got together and lived for a couple of hundred years in the same city in a lot of peace. Um, a lot of artists have made their residence there. There's uh, El Greco. Uh, Spanish artist, uh, well-known, etc. So we'll get the culture in as well as the business. It's important that the students see both sides. This is important, and I'm going to go to the screen, and I'm going to zoom into you guys, and I'm going to say these are academic courses first. This is not a summer drunk. I want to make sure that students, you hear what I'm saying. If you believe you're going to go abroad and everybody's going to get an A or a B just for showing up, stop watching, go find another program. We're the Harvard College of Business. We're a professional school. We're internationally ranked. We are going to provide solid academic courses, the same content abroad that you'll get here. We'll have students in finance that will earn C's. I thought I was going to get a good grade. You get what you earn. The grade distribution is about the same abroad as it is here on Auburn's campus. If you work hard and play hard, you'll do well. If you play hard and just give it a little lip service, mom and dad and you are not going to be happy. Same content. Study is important, but we want you to have fun. It is a balanced thing. I will repeat, there are behavioral issues. This is not a summer play game. This is a professional program to where there's tremendous value, but you got to work at it. Just want to make sure we're clear. The program fees. Now this is the important one for both parties, not only the parents, but the students. Program fee, $16,980. That's for the whole summer, if you take the whole summer, both countries. If you choose a half program, the flex program or part of the business minor, the Program fee is 9950. Notice I'm using the word program fee. There is no tuition. You pay no tuition. Full summer includes five classes, all your accommodation in both countries, and I've given you some pictures of what these accommodations look like, all in-country transportation, as well as cultural visits during those weekends. The half summer, three classes, if you want three, two or three, all your accommodation, in-country transportation, and cultural visits. Butler, man, that's a lot of money. Yes, it is. I'm a dad, and I understand paying some of these things. I also am a marketing guy, and that is, if you will commit by December 13th for the full program, we take $500 off, half summer, $250. You'll notice what is highlighted. You will commit, which means you will hit the button that says, yes, contract for me to have accommodation and professors to teach these classes. I do not pay until May the 5th, just like it would be a normal summer payment schedule. So you commit to going on the program in December, but you do not pay the bill until May. However, once you commit, you're contractually obligated to pay the fee. I'll go over that in a second. What else do I need to know? Well, I'm a dad and I'm a parent that has had to pay some tuition for a daughter, daughters. What's the walkaway cost, Butler? What's the reality? Well, there's also additional expenses besides the program fee. That is estimated to be right at $5,000. We've benchmarked what it cost round trip airfare to Europe. 
We've benchmarked what the meals are going to cost on a daily basis for your student to live abroad for these 12 weeks. There's a study abroad fee. Butler, what's a study abroad fee? You're going to love the study abroad fee. The study abroad fee is so we run all of the paperwork through study abroad so you don't have to pay any tuition. By doing that, it allows us to run these programs as study abroad, and it's a university program process. So it helps us out. The reality is there's the program fee from Auburn abroad, HCOP, which is the business school professional fee, any tours that you will take, and, and fun. We are saying it should cost about $5,000. If your student is one of the kinds of students that when they go out to dinner, they buy for everybody else, I will assure you this is not enough money. But benchmarking, this will be plenty of money for the fun and good fun, clean fun, traveling over the break. But if you are exorbitant, that's not enough. So you take that 5,000 with, I'm going to round it to 17, 23,000 is the walkaway cost, the complete walkaway cost. No more than that. That's a lot, but it's an investment. And here's what I want you to notice. For comparison, for summer 24, tuition for out-of-state students alone is 17,000. To have the dorm room here at Auburn is 6,300. So there's 23,000 right there for exactly the same classes, not including airfare, not including fun, not including food. You're money ahead if you are an out-of-state tuition payer. You are money ahead. It is a no-brainer in terms of the experience. In-state, you will pay more, not much more, but you will pay more for this international experience. It is a tremendous value. And since 1997, when I and Dr. Sharon Oswald started these programs, we benchmark. We have never had a student say it was not worth it, and we've never had a parent say it was not worth it. We've always had people say, boy, I wish I could go on another one. That was a great opportunity. I learned a lot. I highly recommend it. So now we go to the next level. What do I need to do in order to affiliate myself, to enroll, to apply to this program, any of these programs, for the major summer study abroad with Harvard College? Here's what we've got. Number one, parents talk to your students. Students talk to your parents. We have found that if parents are on a Zoom call listening to a discussion, if they are out of state, 75% of parents will agree with their student to go abroad because of the value in this proposition to them. Parents talk to students, students talk to parents. The next level is talk to your advisors. Take the brochures that have the classes listed to your advisors to make sure you're not going to take classes that are presented during the summer. We want you to apply to the program, and I will provide a link for that. Applying to the program means that you'll fill out the paperwork, it's online, you'll answer a bunch of questions, and then you wait for the acceptance. This is where I need to help you understand what we mean by applying, accepting, and committing. Just like applying to other universities when you were thinking about Auburn, you sent out applications. After some time, they reviewed your background, and in this case, they look at your behaviors to see if there's anything on your record that says you may be uh, a risk to yourself or others. And if that's the case, they will not accept you. This is Auburn University's Auburn Abroad. It has nothing to do with the college. The second is they look at your financial record and make sure that you're up to date and that you're not in arrears or there are some circumstances that won't allow you to pay your bills. After two weeks, you will receive electronically a note that says you're accepted into the program. Once you're accepted into the program, that's where the decision making comes in. It's like, do I really want to do this? And it's the same as when you got accepted by other universities. It's like, well, which one do I want to commit to? Committing to the program means this. 
it means that you are going to contractually obligate yourself to pay the bill for the program fee in its entirety by May the 5th. You will be billed a week after you hit the commitment button. When you hit the commitment button, a week later you're going to get a bill that says, hey, you're being charged this fee. It's due on May the 5th. That's what commitment means. What I'm going to highly recommend, I cannot say this enough, I highly, strongly, most vehemently recommend that you purchase program cancellation insurance within the time frame of committing. It's usually three to four weeks that you are allowed to purchase program cancellation insurance. And it's what they call CFAR. Cancel for any reason. It doesn't matter the reason. Grandma's not feeling well. I'm not feeling well. I don't want to go. I've got cold feet. Cancel for any reason up until the time you leave. 75% of the invoice value of what you have paid between you and the insurer will be your policy, 75%. And by the way, this program worked very well during COVID when we executed our program policies. Students, everybody was made whole, whole up until the value of the contract. Can't stress this enough. The other is with the airlines being as goobered up as they are, canceling flights right and left around the world and in the United States due to weather and other issues, please purchase flight insurance in case the flight gets canceled. Those are the two things. So commitment means that you're going to be contractually obligated. Commitment means we're going to strongly recommend you buy insurance. It also means for the students, look at this. You are obligating yourself to attend all required pre-departure meetings. What that means is you can't come back and say, well, I've got a fraternity meeting that night. Oh, I've got a chess club meeting. No, because your health and safety depends on this, not only your own, but everyone else on the program. We want you to meet the other people that are gonna be on this program. For those of you that may not have a deep network or know other people, we will have meet and greets. We will have some social activities for you to meet other people. Then for the roommate scenarios to where in our accommodation we've got doubles, it's going to be up to you to choose your roommate. If not, we will supply a roommate for you. So it's important. It's also important for you to learn about the recommended flights. You are on your own to purchase your own flights. We will have people at the airport on these two days that will be standing there with a note that says Harvard College of Business study abroad this way we will make sure that your luggage is arrived and if not we'll work with you in order to get your luggage and get you from the airport to the facilities in Milan <clears throat> from the airport or from the facilities in Madrid to the airport but you need to know the processes. And by missing the meetings, you're gonna miss important information that you need to have. You're also gonna meet your professors. You're gonna learn about the class requirements, what you're gonna need in terms of your laptop, your computing, how to get access to your books and materials. You are also going to sign a behavior contract. Faculty and staff also sign this behavior contract. This is something that we implemented a number of years ago and the rest of the university has followed. It has been vetted by our university attorneys as well as our risk management people. Parents, when you came to Camp War Eagle or at this stage of your career with your student, you have heard about the FERPA laws. If you call me as a professor and say, hey, can you tell me what's going on with Johnny? And I'm gonna say, who's Johnny? Well, I'm Johnny's parent and you know he's in your international marketing class and I'm gonna say I can't speak to you about this under FERPA laws I can't even tell you if Johnny's enrolled at Auburn University unless you have signed the waiver that you're allowed to talk to a professor we cannot legally say anything to you what we have found for the health and safety of our students is that we need to be able to contact you immediately 
So your student is going to sign a form, a waiver, and agree to a whole lot of behavioral things that are important for their health and safety in a foreign environment. And it has to do with the way they're going to behave 24-7. As far as the university goes, legally, they are on an extended field trip. The whole time they're abroad, they're in an Auburn University classroom. Students, if you don't want this level of compliance, don't go on a Harvard program. These are set up for your health and safety, not that we want to be watching you the whole time. But we can't have you being stupid. And I mean that in every sense of the, the, the word. You've got to be on the alert. You're going to have fun. I went on one of these in 1979. I understand. I've done it myself. I've also been on the backside of these as a faculty member. I understand. But I also understand that there's some guidelines that we have to do and it follows the whole idea of mama be safe. We have found that when there have been challenges and we make the phone call to the parents and we're all on the same page, we have found that the parents are very appreciative of knowing what's going on and usually those behaviors stop immediately and we're all on the same page. Just want to make sure that everyone's clear. What does commitment mean? You are going to sign the contract. Without signing the contract, you are ineligible to go. It's a health and safety thing. So health insurance, I've given you an idea on that. The other thing about health besides the insurance is what we call wellness checks. If for some reason your son or daughter is not in class, we have people that take role in every class. And 10 minutes after the class has started, if your son or daughter or you, the student, is not there, they text to the facility. Remember, we've got people in the facility 24-7, and they go knocking on the door to find out where you are to make sure you're healthy, you're safe. If you're ill, do we need to get you to the clinic? Have you overslept? Is there something we need to know to make sure that you are safe and well? Because you can't miss classes. The reason you can't miss classes is with this intense schedule, if you miss three days of classes, that's almost two weeks of school because they are moving at such a rapid pace. So we want to make sure you're healthy. We're going to check on you. We're going to find out if there's anything we should know to help you out. And we are there to do that 24-7. What are some of the skills learned? Well, you can take a look at this. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but I will say that everything that you see on this list is a skill that will be learned sometime during the summer on our programs. You'll get an international experience. Problem solving, uh, how do we get from A to B when the metro's down? By the way, if you want Auburn, this isn't like Auburn, don't go on our programs. The goal of going abroad is for it to be different for there to have different time zones, different timelines, different culture, different eating, different ways of getting about, different ways of thinking, interacting with people that are different. Well, my Wi-Fi didn't work. You're in a city that's a couple of thousand years old. They don't have the Wi-Fi connectivity in some of these locations as you're going downtown that you might have here in Auburn. Get over it. You're there to learn. You'll figure it out. Problem solving, flexibility, self-awareness, courage, confidence. If anything, the major thing that your sons and daughters are going to come back with, remember I said a transformational educational experience, they are going to come back changed. And they're going to come back with a different level of confidence than they had, regardless of how many times they have traveled before, from zero to 20 times. We've had that range on our programs. But there's a whole different air of the way they come back after doing things. I am extremely proud to be involved with these programs, to be able to be there from the beginning and to see the... I'm getting goosebumps right now. The transformation is palpable. And that's what we want for your students. We want you to have a transformative learning experience. What do we do next? In that flow chart, talk to each other, find out what the 
challenges are, the pros and cons of doing this, and think about this as a lifelong opportunity. Talk to your academic advisor. There's brochures all over this building and on the web pages. Take those brochures and those courses to your advisors to make sure those classes work for you. We do not want you being stuck with something that is not valuable. And then there are some classes that you may have had. There are substitute classes, and we can go over those at a more detailed information session. But try to begin this application process as soon as possible. I hate to say it this way. I sound like a marketing guy. I am, but seats are limited. We do first come, first serve, meaning the first to commit is the first one that gets that seat. You get an application, you get accepted. That's the first part. But the real part is once you hit the commit button, we are obligated to provide that information and those classes and that opportunity to you. I'm gonna wear a different hat. What happens if the program gets canceled? Two things. Remember program cancel insurance? You're gonna apply for that. Our obligation is to provide those courses to you online. Your student will not lose the summer. When COVID hit, this is partly what we did. We provided the courses that we had promised online, either that summer or the next summer, when we couldn't go abroad a second time. So truthfully, financially, if they get canceled, your money ahead, except that you don't get the experience. But we will deliver all of these courses we promise Regardless of why it gets canceled, if the Auburn is running, the classes will be delivered. And then the last is apply now. Apply now is exactly what it says. If you will click on this link, it will take you to Auburn Abroad. This is the web page that it will take you to. It is Auburn Abroad, and at this, this page, you'll see it says for majors and minors in Milan, Italy and Madrid, Spain. And it's got an apply now area. It's got an overview. And what this does is it walks you through the programs. There's the business major programs, fast track. There's the brochure, business consulting. There's the brochure flex. There's the brochure. And to give you an example of what this would look like, here's your brochure. It gives, all the same time deadlines and everything that I've gone over, but it also shows you the classes. So if you were doing a business flex, you would choose one of these three classes in session one, one of these three classes in session two. You take a break. Session three is now Milan, excuse me, Madrid. By the way, we've got this foundations of leadership class. You can obtain a leadership certificate. It's being taught by the leadership faculty here at Auburn. Um, and you'll take a class in session four. And then if you wanted an online class over the entire summer, that is shown there as well. So this is what these programs look like and this is what you would take to your advisor. It also has the non-business majors, the locations, etc but you will apply here where it says apply and the dates. That's the important part of this <coughs> pardon me, uh, area. You need to do this now. So now that you've seen that apply now, I strongly recommend that you have the discussions. Decide on if this is right for you and this is a good investment in your future. I think it's a great investment. I did one of these myself in 1990, 1979. Some people ask me why I do this. In 1979, Dr. Armando Payas, I was an MBA student at the University of Central Florida and I was taking a Spanish class and I'm going to emulate what he said with all due respect to him and his accent, he's given me permission to do this. Danny, you go with us to España, he changed your life. He changed your life, you forever change, you go. So I went and he convinced me and I took out a student loan. And just so you know, that was for a seven week program for three classes. Our Harvard programs for five classes over 12 weeks, looking at what I paid in 1979, indexing for inflation, bringing it to current dollars, for 12 weeks and five classes, 
Students are paying in real dollars $500 more. We are a tremendous value. Dr. Mondo Pias, you took our money. Sorry. But anyway, I owe Dr. Pias because he took me abroad. It opened my eyes. It changed the way I look at the world. But most importantly, in 1990, excuse me, 2019, 2019, 40 years to the day later, I'm taking a picture on the stadium field in Madrid, in Barnabo Stadium. We had 75 or so consulting students. And as I'm taking the picture, I look at the date. It was 40 years to the day that Dr. Armando Payas brought me to Spain. And he said, Donnie, change your life. I owe Dr. Pius because he opened the doors for me. And I hope we can open the doors for your children. With that, I thank you. I hope that this has been helpful. If I can help you in any way, the name is Danny Butler, Assistant Dean of Global Programs. If I can't help you, I will find someone that can. Whether you go on our programs or not, please help your student get out of their comfort zone and go somewhere that they don't speak the current language, their home language, even if it's for Cancun over the break. Help them develop a global mindset. After all, we live in a global world.